Hi guys, this is Ted Vitale with the Chaos Group, and today we are going to be covering the V-Ray for SketchUp Quick Start. The first thing I'll need you to do is download the Quick Start tutorial model from the link below. Once you've done that, go ahead and open a copy of SketchUp. And here I'm using SketchUp 2015 Pro. And let's go ahead and file open and choose wherever you saved the quick start guide. Go ahead and open that in your training container house share file. Go ahead and open training container house share. We don't want to save any changes to the existing scene, so we're going to close that. And here we've got our scene. This is a simple container house, and we are going to cover just some basics, the ease of use, the speed and power, and the quality results of V-Ray for SketchUp. And the first thing I'm going to do is cover the toolbar and where everything is and what everything is. I'll go ahead and pull this down. We've got two toolbars in total. The main toolbar, you have your materials, options editor, start render, this is for the production render, real-time render or RT render, the batch render tool which will run a number of renderings at once, the help menu, the frame buffer, as well as a number of other tools. We are not going to cover these tools in this particular tutorial. The next toolbar that you've got is the V-Ray for SketchUp lighting toolbar and there you will find the Omni Light tool, the Rectangle Light tool, the Spotlight tool, our Dome Light tool, the Sphere Light, and the IES Light. Now each of these lights are very powerful and have different uses. We are not going to be covering lighting today outside of natural daylight lighting systems. We're going to go ahead and dock this back up here since we're not using it. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same with my main toolbar. So the first thing I'm going to do is kick off a render just to see how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead up here and choose the start production render and let's see what kind of quality we get. V-Ray is parsing the scene at the moment. It's figuring out what kind of geometry is there and what it needs to render. And here we see the frame buffer window and the progress window pop up. Right now we're doing the light cache pass and the pre-passes to figure out uh, lighting of the overall scene. And now we're doing the final pass and rendering the image. As you can see, we've got a nice, clean, rendered scene. There are materials already set up on the exterior of this container house, as well as the windows and doors, including some additional wall graphics like the V-Ray logo. All of these materials are set up and ready to render. As you can see, the lighting is a bit harsh. It's a noon rendering in the middle of the summer. It looks good, but I think it can look much better. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and close my progress window, as well as my frame buffer, and open up my options editor. So let's talk about the options editor first. A few things you'll see here are your presets toolbar and then the rollouts below. Now, many people get confused and a bit intimidated by the rollout panel here. We won't be covering much of this today, but we will cover the important areas, including global switches and output. We will also be covering the presets, how they work, and when to use them. There is an additional presets tutorial that will give you a more in-depth look at presets and how they work. You can follow the written tutorial online. And if you have any questions, you can always visit our forums at the chaosgroup.com website. So first things first, in our global switches, let's go ahead and click the global switches rollout. We are going to use the override materials. Now, in this particular scene, we have some materials with properties set up so that they won't get overwritten. For example, the glass on both the large windows and doors should render clear in this particular scene, even after we use the override materials. So let's go ahead and click override materials. In here, you'll see a value of 200. I'm going to drop that a little bit lower. 
to 185. And let's go ahead and see how that renders. Go ahead and close that, click render. V-Ray will parse the scene again and figure out what's there. And it will do this every single time you click render. So now we can see that we've got a much faster render because V-Ray isn't calculating all the different materials in the scene. It's only calculating the one material applied to everything. We do have an overbright area with the ground plane just because it's a almost noon rendering. And I don't really like the shadows because they're too harsh. But if I keep turning off my frame buffer and re-rendering, it's going to take some time. So this is where I suggest to use the RT or real-time rendering solution. Because we don't have foliage or additional entourage in the scene, it's light and it's fast. So now we've got our RT render. We can quickly and easily see what's in our scene. I'm going to slide this down over here. And let's start looking at how to give it a little bit more pizzazz. First thing we're going to do is start looking at daylighting solutions. We are only using the in SketchUp sun and sky. And we can then use our shadow settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is tweak my daylighting system. And we can see this update in RT very quickly. So I'm just going to bring this to more of an afternoon, late afternoon scene. And I think I'm going to go later in the year so I get some nice long dramatic shadows across the front of the house and maybe bring this back a little bit. This looks nice. So what I'm trying to get here is a nice long shadow to accentuate the ribbing effect that happens on the side of the shipping container home. So I'm going to just tweak this a little bit more. And I like that. So we don't have any overbright areas. We've got a nice smooth gradient on our sky with a nice highlight back over here in the corner. And overall, I like the lighting of this particular scene. So really quickly, we can start to see what our overall scene is going to look like. So the next step we're going to take is to render the scene in a production rendering. So let's go ahead and close our RT window. Open up our options editor. And open up the actual output rollout. Now since this particular scene is being rendered at 800 by 600, which is a good size to test at, we want to have a good production rendering as well. So my suggestion is to bump up our quality to a higher resolution. I'm going to suggest 1280 by 720. Now we can also get exactly what we see in the SketchUp scene by selecting the Get View Aspect. When we select the Get View Aspect, it's immediately going to change our height and width based on the overall aspect ratio of the SketchUp view. Since I want this HD resolution, we're going to stick with the 1280 by 720. The next step I'm going to take is to select a render output. Go ahead and choose the Save Output Location and add a location to save it to. In this case, I'm going to resave my output to the container house. You have a number of different save files. The Portable Network Graphics, or PNG, is my personal favorite. And the reason I use it is because it saves out my scene without a background and allows me to add in an additional sky background in post-production. You can also save a number of different other formats. The only other one I would recommend is the JPEG or .vr image file format. The JPEG image will save the scene exactly as you see it, and the V-Ray raw image files will save out a VR image which has all channels and all V-Ray information included in it. For this particular scene, I'm going to save a JPEG because I want the background in it. Name it, and hit save. Go ahead and close the output, and next let's talk about our presets.
Now our presets manager has three categories, the camera, exterior, and interior. The interior obviously covers interior qualities. The exterior obviously covers exterior qualities. The camera presets will show you a number of different types of preset camera files that are going to load into your scene. In our case, we have lighting set up already and we're happy with the lighting, so I'm not going to change any of this. If you do begin to use HDRIs and dome lighting, you can choose different camera settings based on the lighting situation that you have in your scene. Since we are using an exterior scene, we will then talk about the exterior presets. Once you select exterior presets, we have a list of different quality presets to the right. My computer is fairly quick, so I'm going to choose the medium quality exterior. Once selected, click the green Use Preset button and it will be immediately applied to your Options Editor. Once we've applied our exterior presets, the next step we'll take is in our global switches to turn off our override materials effect. Close this and let's start a render. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, this particular scene will render faster or slower. In my case, I've got a fairly quick computer, but it may take some time even then. Additional factors in rendering times are the quality at which you're rendering at. Medium quality will render fairly quickly, and as you change the quality settings to high quality, you will see a significant slowdown in your rendering time. Now, for the sake of time, I've sped up my rendering a good bit, but as you can see, we've got a really nice quality rendering at this point. From here, we can add in more entourage and elaborate on the scene a bit more. Once you've finished your scene, you can save it out in multiple formats like I mentioned before. We've saved out ours as a JPEG format in the Quick Start Guide. We should see that now. If you want to save an additional file type out, you can do so by selecting an additional file type. You can also import saved images as long as they are .vrimage file types. This is a file type that is specific to V-Ray and contains a good bit more information than a standard JPEG or PNG file. So let's go ahead and import this into our frame buffer since we've already saved out our image. This particular .vr image is already saved in the Training Container House Share folder and shows exactly how a rendering can look after adding additional entourage. So as you can see, you can quickly and easily create a high quality image in V-Ray for SketchUp 2.0. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and for more information, visit help.chaosgroup.com. Happy rendering!